with Solaire the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, some cool single disc, one record, live albums. I'm specifically thinking of albums from the 70s and the 80s that were not double live records. Double live albums were the thing to do, especially in the 70s. You think of Deep Purple Made in Japan, uh, Frampton Comes Alive, Kiss Alive, Kiss Alive 2. This was just the thing. A lot of people put out double live records and although that can be really cool because you're getting all this music sometimes I really like and in some ways I kind of prefer when it's just one record a single disc live album to me it gets to the point quicker it, it cuts out all the drum solos and guitar solos and crowd sing-alongs and stuff like that and again sometimes that's cool but I also just kind of like the idea of just one record you're putting all your best stuff on that and you're going for it so I picked out some what I think are some pretty cool one record uh, single disc live albums mostly from the 70s and the 80s I didn't include any EPs or uh, things like that so all right I mentioned made in Japan well we also have made in Europe here I actually don't have this on vinyl I'm looking to get this on vinyl and you know this is going to be the topic of another video so I'm not going to get into it right now uh, but made in Japan for me it's just got too much jamming on it there's key, long keyboard solos I love Richard Blackman was my favorite guitar player but there's tons of guitar on there and there's just not that many songs because every song gets so stretched out this suffers a little bit from that this only has five songs on it but again, it's a little bit more to the point. You get like You Fool No One, Stormbringer, and there is a lot of jamming like in Mistreated, but you also get Burn and uh, Lady Double Dealer. So I just kind of appreciate the fact that Made in Europe kind of uh, gets in and gets out a little quicker than Made in Japan does. Now, I debated putting this one on the list, Black Sabbath Live at Last, because this is a uh not sanctioned by the band they eventually bought the rights to this but when this originally came out the band did not approve of this i made a video about this on about the differences between an unofficial release and a bootleg i'll leave the uh, link to that video in the description because this falls as a unofficial release the band signed away their rights in a contract dispute or something or had signed something at some point with with an old manager and he had the rights to this so it got put out it's not it wasn't technically a bootleg or illegal at that time it was just something that the band did not approve of but I, at the time when I was younger this was the only live Ozzy era stuff that you could get for a really long time and I thought it was great and it, they play a lot of songs from Volume 4. You get like Tomorrow's Dream, Killing Yourself to Live, Cornucopia, Snowblind. You get an extended Wicked World. I just complained about extended songs and jamming, but this one's pretty cool because they play like different riffs and stuff. And there's a lot of music packed on this. I don't know what the length of this is, but I think like the side two of this is like 27 minutes long, which is crazy. In the days of vinyl, ideally you didn't want really much more than 20 minutes of music on a side of a record because then you have to put too many grooves in it and it starts to compress the music. But here, man, the, the uh, run out groove, that's this spot on the record where... Uh, that's a spot right here on the record where the when the needle gets it in. You can't really see it here. It's kind of hard to see with the reflection. But man, this is the second side of it. I hope you can see that how small that run out groove is. I mean, this this record goes right up because it's like 26 or 27 minutes on that side of the album. It's it's kind of crazy. I actually use this record sometimes if you want to test your needle on your turntable to see how well it does tracking the inner grooves. Uh, this is a record to do that with. Uh, it's not particularly the best sounding album. They did a remix of this. Check out my difference between a remaster and a remix in the volume four uh, box set. It sounds so much better. It sounds like a completely different album. Okay, how about uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Some Enchanted Evening. Uh, they This is their second live album coming off of On Your Feet, On Your Knees which is a great album, but this one they go with a single disc and it's pretty cool because again, it sort of gets right to the point here. Are you ready to rock? ETI, I always love that. Astronomy, awesome. Uh, kick out the jams, I could do without that. I never liked when Blue Oyster Cult put these cover songs in their live albums. I know it was part of their show, but I don't know, it doesn't work for me. Don't Fear the Reaper, another cover, we gotta get out of this place. So that's a little bit of a disappointment that there's two covers on here, but. 
another example of a cool single album live record. All right, Motorhead, No Sleep Till Hammersmith. Uh, this is an awesome one. And Motorhead, their songs are pretty short, so you get a lot of songs on here. You get six, you get 11 songs on here, and I think it pretty much plays all the ones you would pretty much want to hear. Capricorn, Bomber, Stay Clean, uh, We Are the Road Crew, Iron Horse. I mean, it's, you know, no class. It's it's all on here. So this is a legendary great. I, I can't really picture Motorhead, a double double live album from Motorhead. is maybe a little too much. You know, this to me is just perfect. All right, another one, Judas Priest, Unleashed in the East. Uh, just packs a lot of great songs on here. And it took some of the studio tracks that were maybe a little stiff in the studio, especially off of the earlier records. Like, uh, as much as I love Sad Wings at Destiny, you know, the production on that is maybe could have been a little bit, a little bit better. Although, again, I love that record 10 out of 10 for me. But uh, this is just fantastic. And they just bam, 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 right through all these songs. Uh, there were some that didn't make it on here that made it on to... EPs and stuff like that and I believe the remastered CD version of this has like the three or four extra songs that landed up on EPs so very cool I always love, think this is a great example of a fantastic one record uh, album here Exciter you know Green Man Alishi, Diamonds and Rust Genocide Tyrant uh, you know you just get it fantastic all right, here's one I've always loved, ACDC, If You Want Blood. Uh, this is another one that runs pretty long. It clocks in at, like, I think 52 minutes or something like that, so they cram a lot of music in here. There's a little bit of jamming in here, like with Let There Be Rock. Angus does a solo on here. But it, it's it's cool because they do some of these songs different. The Jack has, a, has different lyrics to it. Uh, Riff Raff is on here. This would have been on their Power Age tour, uh, Rock and Roll Damnation. High voltage, there's some, you know, Bond singing along with the crowd. Rocker just comes ripping out at you. So, I was hell ain't a bad place to be. Problem child, bad boy boogie has some jamming in it too. This is, I've always loved this. I always thought it was just right to the point. You know, maybe disappointing that if they had put out a live album after Highway to Hell from that tour, there would have been some great songs on there. But there is the soundtrack to the movie, Let There Be Rock, which was on the Highway to Hell tour. All right, here's a great single disc live album, Cheap Trick at Budokan. I did a video uh, on this album, uh, focused just on this album. Always loved Cheap Trick. Uh, this is a great example of a band where the songs really came to life, played in the live setting. Uh, I Want You to Want Me is completely different on the studio version here. This is the version you always hear on the radio. Fantastic. Uh, so many great Songs on here, Come On, Come On, I've always loved that. Big Eyes is super cool, Need Your Love, Hello There. I love the way the album starts with Hello There, like an intro song. Clock Strikes 10 is like an outro song, Good Night Now. You know, they're taking the show out. Surrender, uh, Ain't That a Shame, fantastic. So this is just a great, great single disc live album. Always love Cheap Trick at Budokan. All right. I'm sure I missed a few. These were the ones that just immediately popped into my head when I was thinking about this subject. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like double live albums? Do you like single live albums? I mean, it all depends on the band. Iron Maiden, Live After Death, a perfect double live album. That doesn't feel like it drags at all. Uh, but let me know. Let me know what you guys think of just single disc live albums versus double live albums. Let me know about some single disc live albums that I may have missed. Uh, you know, in my selections here. These were the ones just off the top of my head. Make sure you check out all my socials. Uh, sign up for me on Twitch. That's just, uh, this is why this is hanging here. I've got a Twitch live stream that I'm wor working on. Some of my synth metal, doom wave, I don't know what to call it, heavy synth, um, original compositions that I'm working on. So make sure you check out those links down below. Let me know your picks for cool single disc live albums. Uh, leave it in the comments down below. Until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.